You're listening to Mom and Doc Talk, where we talk all things healing pans and pandas with an emphasis on homeopathy. Hi, it's Jody, the mom of the Mom and Doc Talk podcast. We're taking a short pause this summer to enjoy our families and hope you're doing the same. We're also doing some prep work for season two of the Mom and Doc Talk podcast. We've got some really exciting episodes coming your way starting August 27th. In the meantime, we wanted to give you guys the opportunity to catch up on any episodes that you might have missed or take a break. We know you need a break. You deserve a break. Here's a rebroadcast of one of our most popular episodes. We hope you enjoy it. This is Mom and Doc Talk, where we talk all things healing pans and pandas with a special focus on homeopathy. Today, for our very first podcast, we're going to do a brief introduction and overview to who we are as people, so you understand why we're actually here talking to you every week about pans, pandas, and homeopathy, and where our passion really comes from. And since this is actually Mom and Doc Talk, uh, we're going to start with the mom. So Jody, tell us about what brought you here. Um, So I was essentially just a regular old mom, had uh, two little girls and um, both of which ended up being medically complex kiddos. Um, We'll talk more about my younger daughter in future episodes. Um, But right now, just to kind of give you a little idea of how um, we kind of entered into this pans pandas world, um, my daughter, Avery, a perfectly happy, healthy, a neurotypical little girl, um, somewhere around five years old, started to change um, and really had some significant abrupt changes to, uh, you know, behaviors, emotions, um, all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff showing up, OCD, anxiety, like all of these things. And I was completely and totally stumped as were the doctors that I was taking her to. And um, so luckily I had a mom who told me about Pans Pandas um, and I just like threw my entire world into researching, trying to figure out what it was, trying to, or if that was indeed what it was, Mm -hmm. um, taking her to all of the providers once I was sure that that's what she had. Um, A whole bunch of specialists, whole bunch of treatments, all of the things I could possibly do. And she just continued to get sicker and sicker. Um, We'd have little bits of reprieve, but then she would go back into being really sick again. And we just kind of got to this point where we were like, okay, nothing's working. This is, and in fact, not only is it not working, but it's also um, giving her more GI issues, making things worse. Um, After we got through all of that stuff, I finally was willing to open my mind up to homeopathy possibly being um, something that could work. Um, and really it was like my last resort. So it was like, okay, let's, let's go about this, even though I think it's kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> like, let's, let's, let's try this thing. Um, did research on homeopaths and by the grace of God found you, um, found you because you, um, you, I knew that you would get it. Um, and I know you'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, but you did, you totally got it. Um, you and homeopathy took, um, our family was living a nightmare every single day. We were, um, Avery was hurting and suffering and in pain every single day. Um, we were living in a state of shock and, um, just depression, all of us, just because what happened to Avery uh, was such a significant change and her, her symptoms were controlling our lives 24 um, seven and started homeopathy. That was completely wild and crazy. We'll talk a whole lot about that. Um, treatment was, was uh, a, a lot of wildness, but also just a tremendous, tremendous blessing. Um, it ended up you know, healing Avery. She's been pans free for a good long time now. Um, living a happy, healthy, normal 11 year old life, um, now and doing really, really well. Um, I, during all of this, I did a ton of research. I learned a whole, whole lot. Um, it is, it it was literally what I did night and day, um, was researching whenever I wasn't managing symptoms or feeding children. Um, and so 
once we got through homeopathy, I realized um, two things. Number one, that there wasn't enough advocacy, say the word for me, advocacy, <laughs> advocacy <laughs> um, for the condition in general. Um, people didn't know who, what it was. Doctors didn't know who it was, uh, anything about it. Um, nobody wanted to treat it. And um, that I, I recognize that that it needed to be talked about. It still needs to be talked about a whole lot, which is one of the reasons we're here. Um, and, and number two, and more importantly, the thing that like really, really got laid on my heart um, was homeopathy, because as we came into the PANS world um, and I got connected with all the Facebook groups and all the moms, um, nobody was talking about hope. I used to ask you know, is my kid going to be like this forever? And nobody could say anything other than, you know, we're trying this, we're doing that. There was literally zero hope in the PANS community. Um, I wasn't hearing good, like success stories from anyone. And so we got to the end of homeopathy and I was like, holy cow, like, what if this works for more kids? And so I went out and I found some moms who had done homeopathy and um, realized that it wasn't just our family that experienced this. So I was like, oh my gosh, the, the like my goal, my drive is to help the PANS community learn about homeopathy. Um, and so I started doing that and was super, super overwhelmed because I was talking to so many moms yep. in Facebook, in my PMs, like just like, 30, 40 conversations going at one time, trying to do all this thing and recognize that there's people that actually want to learn about this. Um, but I was super, super overwhelmed with it. And that is when I came to you and um, was like, I need help. Um, and, and how can we do this? Like, how can we come together and give these moms the education that they're looking for and give the PANS and PANDAS community some hope and, and let them... Um, see through my family story and now many family stories, um, that, that homeopathy is, um, you know, is, is, uh, you know, something that is giving our children long-term symptom relief. And that's kind of how you and I, uh, not just symptom other. relief, healing where like healing, they can be yes. exposed to the things that would have triggered yes. the symptoms before and have no reaction and not need any treatment to prevent a reaction. So it's not just, symptom relief, but having to take it's, it's, it's actual healing where they don't need to take something regularly, yep. getting off of the medications, getting off of the supplements, um, and being able to have a non-perfect diet, um, and all of the things being able to go to school, being able to be yes. exposed to all of the triggers. So, yeah, we've been blazing trails ever since. <laughs> Well, as Jody said, she came to me and said, Hey, I need some help. And so that's when we decided to found the Facebook group that we manage that Jody and I are, um, the, the leaders of, which is called homeopathy for pans and pandas. Um, it is a group. It, it is, um, only for people who are parents or caregivers, primary caregivers of, uh, children who likely have pans and pandas or who have the diagnosis of pans and pandas. So it is a, a, an exclusive group. So if you aren't into that category, you probably won't be able to be part of that group, which is one reason that we're doing this podcast is to take some of the education and make it available to a broader audience. Um, but we did want to make sure we kept that a safe space, not only to get education, but to get support and to have people there who understood what they were going through. And that understanding is a really important component of the healing process, because as Jody was um, alluding to, that's one of the reasons that she chose me um, to be uh, her provider to help her kiddo heal with pans and pandas uh, using homeopathy. Um, and that's because I likely had pans as a child. Um, I was not diagnosed with pans because I was born 20 years too early. Um, I was born 20 years, 19 years technically before the diagnosis was first defined in 1998. Um, and so instead of getting that diagnosis, I got diagnosed um, when I was older with um, bipolar disorder, first depression, and then bipolar disorder, because of the reaction I had to medications that many children with PANS have to the medications that I was given in a high dose. Um, if I'd been younger, I would have been diagnosed with potentially OCD, with disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. I had all of the symptoms that we'll talk about in our next podcast, where we go over what PANS and PANDAS actually is. But um, I had 
really significant mood swings, intense rage, intense anxiety, intrusive thoughts, um, some significant fears, some out of the nowhere separation anxiety, and then sometimes I was completely fine. Um, urinary accidents as a fully potty trained child that would come on just episodically. Um, you name it, I had the symptoms. Um, but like I said, I ended up getting diagnosed with mental health conditions um, and treated that way. Um, and it wasn't until I was seeking out some solutions for how I could maintain stability and be able to have a child that homeopathy came into my life. Um, so I was in naturopathic medical school at that time, intending to help people with mental health conditions, because what I was seeing was that the medications that I was being given weren't necessarily helping me that much. They were just making me less problematic for other people, but I felt terrible still um, and had all sorts of side effects and, and issues come about as, as a result of the medications that I was being given. Um, and, and you could argue got sicker because of um, a couple of the medications. Um, and so I was already in naturopathic medical school. Homeopathy was not something that made sense to me. So just a quick brief preview for homeopathy. We'll have a whole podcast about what homeopathy is, but homeopathy uses very small amounts of substances in nature um, to help stimulate healing. And, and it just did not make sense to me. I went to the University of Maryland and my background was in physiology and neurobiology. So the, the smallness of the substances was what really tripped me up. That said, I went to see my psychiatrist and I asked about how I could possibly have a child. And he said, your, cho your choices are adoption or electric shock therapy to be able to maintain stability. Um, and this is somebody, I mean, I was, I was a very uh, functional member of society. I had, you know, I was in the military, I had um, high level jobs, security clearance, you name it. And I, and I was able to do so with, um, with a, a reasonable amount of stability, even when I was having an episode. And so to suggest that I needed shock therapy was to just, you know, not to be a pun, but it was shocking that that was what was recommended to me. So it had me primed to be willing to try homeopathy when I went to a conference and I heard about some success for, for using homeopathy for bipolar disorder, which is at the time what I still thought that I had. Um, and holy cow, am I grateful that I did because it ended up being the most powerful medicine that I've ever used. It gave me stability quicker than medications did and without dulling me down or the side effects. It, it, like I, the way I would describe it is that the medications made me feel gray and hollow. And with homeopathy, I felt stable, but with like all of the colors of the rainbow and of life and with a fullness to it that I could still use my brain well, like the medications tend to like really dull your thinking down. Um, and so I had to learn how to use homeopathy once I saw how powerful it was. And that's how I ended up getting into this area. I didn't plan on uh, specializing in pans and pandas. I actually started with a, a broad uh, mental health focus practice. Pans and pandas found me and it was through the consistency and persistence of Pan's parents um, that kept coming and coming because Jody was among, among one of them, uh, the, the people who'd seen success with using homeopathy for their kiddos with Pan's, telling other folks about it. Um, and so I finally embraced it and said, you know what, this is, this is heading in my direction. I don't know why, but I need to pay attention. Um, and it was through that paying attention and like embracing it and learning more about it that I was able to see that I likely had pans as a child um, through those conversations with all these kids where I could relate to everything that they were experiencing. And then conversations with my mother, who's like, you know, you'd had that too. You had that too. You had that too. And my brother likely had pans as well. Um, and so I just embraced it and I accepted that I needed to learn both about myself and from those parents who, you know, I have that broad knowledge, that broad medical and homeopathic knowledge, but parents have a very specific knowledge about the one patient that they're working for, right? Their kiddo. And, you know, Jody's not alone being the mom that was up, you know, barely sleeping because as soon as her kid went to bed, that was the time to do the research and try and figure out how to make her waking hours better. Um, and so, I embraced that I needed to learn from the moms. Um, they also needed my guidance and it was going to be more beneficial if we were working together as a team. So it's through working with moms like you, Jody, that helped me to learn more about myself, but also to become just that much more of a, an expert about pans and pandas so they could help guide lots and lots of families. Um, and it's continued with this group that we put together, this pans and pandas, uh, homeopathy for pans and pandas Facebook group that we manage. And it was in that group that we were recognizing there was 
a, a gap. Um, and this is where mom and doc talks was sort of born from. So there was a gap between what people were being told to do by their providers, even if it was just homeopathy with like um, where the rubber meets the road. So like, the, here's the way it should work. Here's the theories behind it. Here's the research behind it. Here's this, this, and this. Now go apply it. And then hand that over to a mom who is getting probably two to three hours of sleep a night, um, really paralyzed by the OCD, the, you know, the rituals, the behaviors, all of the things that come along with having a pan's child. Um, and then saying, do these 20 supplements and these number of injections come get tested all of these times. Now change your diet to this. Now remediate your home with this. Um, and if you mess up with any of these things, if you miss one supplement by an hour, you're going to, your kid's going to get a lot worse. Or if they, they get a little bit of gluten into their diet, they're going to have a big flare. Um, oh, and by the way, also your kids can't go to school because they're refusing school and you can't get them there. And so also teach your kids at home. Um, and so I, it really dawned on me when I was at a conference and seeing all of these recommendations and personally feeling overwhelmed. Like, I don't know how I would do all of these things that are being recommended and I don't have a special needs child. Um, and then seeing them at the at lunch and all of them are eating all of the things that they're telling their patients not to eat. And I'm like, you don't even have, you're not even a, a special needs child. Like, and you can't avoid these things that are generally not good for anybody. Um, you know, shoving their mouths full of like cake and soda and chips and whatever. Um, and it dawned on me that what we really need is we need mom and a doc to team up and to talk about the reality about what's recommended and then what it's really like and how to make those two things come together so you can work and have healing for your families. Um, and so I, I thought to myself, who is the mom to do this with? And Jody immediately came to mind because as you will learn, if you stick with us through this, our podcast, um, in the very beginning introductory part of it, we're gonna essentially walk through Jody's journey as a, a framework to help talk about all of the things that go into pans and pandas. And the reason we're doing that, and the reason Jody is the one who is my partner in all of this, is because she's been through it all. Um, her kiddo has had the gamut of recommendations, of procedures, of um, all of the things that could possibly be recommended and, and tried with a kid with pans or pandas. Um, Jody went through and had some a lot of negative reactions too. So she is not the miracle story. She is the story of all of the way things that could go wrong and how to okay. navigate it and still come out um, victorious on the other end, having your kiddo back, pants, pandas free, able to be exposed to things that they would normally have triggers from um, and have no, no re regressions, no flares or anything, just have a typical immune response. Um, so that's why Jody is the person who is here with me because she, if you've been there, she's been there. If you've experienced it, she's experienced it. And so she can actually give you um, some insights into how to navigate both when things go right and when things go terribly wrong. Yeah. I love that. I feel like our journey with Avery set me up for being able to, you know, come in and do the, okay, this is what we're, you know, providers telling us, but this is what it's going to look like in your home. And it's going to look, you know, when this happens, when that happens, like all of the things happen, our journey set me up for this. And then I always say this, I feel like your whole life was the universe's way of setting you up to lead our children to health and, and, and lead and educate the community the way that you have. Um, so I think just together, it seems like it works really well. It seems, um, it, it seems like, um, you know, giving moms the ability to see both sides, um, the, the provider side and the mom side of it, um, really helps calm some nerves and um, get a little bit deeper understanding of how healing works, what it's actually going to look like, um, and how to move through it too. So we realize that you might be listening to this uh, as a re uh, recommendation from somebody. You might not have pans, pandas yourself, or you might not have a child who has pans or pandas, but they're wanting to you to learn a little bit more about this. Um, so the things that you could get out of this uh, podcast, if you are not somebody who has pans, pandas yourself, or who might have it, or who has a child with pans or pandas, um, just learning about how to help support these families um, is something that we'll be talking about. Um, we'll also be just doing some general education about homeopathy. And the reality is homeopathy is so effective 
for so many things outside of pans and pandas that this could still be a really beneficial podcast to listen to about healing in general, um, and but especially healing complex illness. So we obviously are talking about it in the context of pans pandas because that's where our expertise is, but there's still a lot that you could get from it uh, related to just healing with homeopathy in general. Um, I do want to let you know before we wrap up for today um, that uh, I did found Resilience Naturopathic. If you've heard of Resilience Naturopathic, um, maybe, maybe not. Um, but it's we are a, a quite large group of providers who are all focused on healing pans and pandas with homeopathy. And our goal is to make pans and pandas a thing of the past and homeopathy the medicine of the future. Um, and the reason that I founded this group and continue to allow it to grow to the extent that it has is because my family is your family and your families are my family because I was a kid with pans. My brother was a kid with pans. My daughter is susceptible to pans. My daughter that I got as a result, hallelujah, of homeopathy. I'm so grateful. Um, we do a Wednesday every do we win this Wednesday. We do a homeopathy. Hallelujah. That's where that came from. That hallelujah. You'll hear hallelujah. Homeopathy. Right, yeah, our homeopathy. Yeah, hallelujahs. Um, and so, um, I'm so grateful that I got um, uh, that opportunity to have a little girl and I know that she is susceptible uh, to becoming a child with PANS. And so, like I said, your family is my family, my family is your family. And one of the things that we see happen so much in the PANS, PANDAS community because it's so poorly understood um, that people end up waiting for a very, very, very long time to see a provider who actually understands. And so that didn't sit well with me. Um, so rather than just waiting and having a, a two year long wait list to see me, I decided to bring more people in and train them because our goal is to help people actually recover. Um, and we're not in this just for us. Um, we're in this actually for the community. I mean, Jody is a perfect example. She could put this in her past. Um, her kiddo is recovered and she could just say, Sayonara, I'm grateful that I'm I got through that. Let's go on with life. And she's not, um, because we're here still fighting for these families uh, to make sure that there's awareness of pans and pandas um, and that kiddos are able to heal. So um, that's where resilience naturopathic came from, uh, was that really innate, strong desire to help these families heal and from recognition that. It takes a special kind of person to work with a pans pandas family. It takes a special kind of training um, that I had managed to somehow figure out through lots of trial and error and understanding and, and practice. Um, and so training these folks to um, really effectively manage pans and pandas and to come together as a community too, because being a provider for pans and pandas, just to really transparent is also not easy. Being a parent of a pans pandas kid is not easy, but being a provider for pans and pandas is also not easy. Um, so it's really a way that we can have community and help lift each other up and support each other. So that's where the practice comes in. Um, just as a, a caveat that that is, um, that is something that is behind all of this as well. Um, but we're not going to be doing a ton of talking about the practice itself. We're talking more about education to teach you more about what pans pandas is, about homeopathy, um, things to consider in your healing journey and all of that. Um, anything else that you would like to share before we wrap up for today, Jody? I don't, I'm, I'm just excited to get going till, you know, tell Avery's story more on a broader platform yeah. and, um, you know, teach some folks that might not know about pans and pandas, some stuff, um, it, you know, further, further advocate and spread awareness about, uh, pans and pandas and homeopathy. So it's all exciting to me. I'm, I'm excited to do all the things. <laughs> so we know that it's really hard to listen to things, especially if you are in the community where you have a child who has pans or pandas, or that you think you might have it yourself, the attention um, span and the length of time that you have to listen to something is not going to be, you know, hours and hours. So we're, we're going to try and keep these short um, so that you can actually listen to them in, in uh, a really short period of time and get a good, robust amount of information. Um, so we're going to wrap up today. In our next podcast, we're going to be talking all about what PANS and PANDAS actually is to give you that greater context of understanding as we're moving forward. So hopefully we'll see you there.